Hey everyone, welcome to SFDC Stop. And in this video, we are going to learn about list data structure in Apex. So, what is a list? A list is a collection of elements or records that you want to store. So, I can say that let's say you want to create a list of integers. So, I can simply have a collection like this. And I can have different elements inside my collection. So, I can have elements like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. And I can say that this is nothing but a list. And this is a list of integers because I have all the integers that are stored inside my list. So I can have all the elements which belongs to a particular data type stored inside my list. Another property of a list is that each element inside the list is going to be associated with a particular index. And indexing in a list always starts from zero. So I can say the first element of a list is going to have an index zero. The second element is going to have an index one. The third is going to have an index two and uh, the fourth element is going to have an index 3 and so on. So this is going to have 4, 5, 6 and so on. All these indexes help us to find the element at a particular position in a list. So let's say I want to get the fifth element of a list. So I can simply say that the fifth element which is present inside a list is going to be present at position 4. Okay, because if you see this is the first element, this is the second element, this is the third element, this is the fourth element and this is the fifth element. So nth element nth element inside a list is going to be present at n minus 1 index. Okay, so fourth, fifth element inside a list is going to present at fourth index, third element of a list is going to be present at second index, first element of a list is going to be present at zeroth index. So nth element of a list is going to be present at n minus 1 index. So that's all about the theory of a list. Now let's see how can we create a list of integers first of all. So in order to create a list, you can specify the word list and you can specify the data type within these less than and greater than signs. So let's say I want to create a list of integers so I can specify the data type as integer and I can name my list as let's say numbers. Okay. And I can do is equal to new list of integer and that's it. And after that I can do system.debug. So what this code is going to do, it is going to create an empty list of integers. And if you see here in the debug, I'm getting an empty list and this is nothing but a list of integers, although it's empty. So you can consider this syntax as similar to creating an instance of a class. So we can say whenever we create an instance of a class, what we do, we write a class name over here and then we write our variable name or the instance name and then we do a new and then the class name again, right? So you can consider it like that, that I'm creating a list of integers and this is the name or the variable name using which I'm going to refer my list of integers. Now let's see if I want to initialize my list with these numbers, how can we create a list? So I can simply do list of integer numbers is equal to new list of integer. And uh, I can specify numbers right here, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay. And uh, I can simply do system.debug and then numbers. So let me execute this code. And if you see this time a list is created and all the elements that I have specified right here are present inside the list. So in case you want to create a list and you want to initialize your list at a time of creation or at a time of declaration itself. So what can you do? You can simply use the curly braces and you can specify all the elements that you want to put inside your list. The only condition is that all the elements should be of the same data type that you have specified over here. Now let's see how can we create a list of string. So creating a list of string is similar to creating a list of integer. I can simply copy this code and I can paste it over here. So the only difference is that we are going to have a data type as string now. So I'm going to specify the data type as string and we can specify the variable name as let's say employees. Okay. So I'm creating a list of employees and I can have all the employee names that are present inside the list as a string. So I can specify the employees as let's say Richard and uh, Monica and uh, Alec and Dinesh, okay, like this. And if I just execute this code, you can see that I have a list of string created. So if you see here, the list of string is created successfully and we have all the elements that are present inside my list, which I have specified right here, Richard, Monica, Alec, Dinesh, okay. Now let's say I have a list created and I can specify the elements that I want to put inside my list right here. But let's say I want to add one more employee inside my list. How can I do that? How can we add elements inside the list? So what can we do? We can simply create a list like this. So let's just go with the empty list this time. And uh, I'm going to add some elements inside the list. So let's say I want to add 
I want to add 10. So I can simply do numbers dot add 10. So this add function is a predefined function which can be used to add more elements inside a list. And the only thing that you need to take care of is that the data that you are passing in should be of the same data type that you have specified for your list. So I can say that I want to add 10, 20, 30, 40 inside my list. So 20, 30 and 40. And I can simply do system.debug numbers. Okay. So if you see, I have two system.debugs over here. And I'm going to have these two in the log. So this is the empty list that I created initially. And this is the list when I have inserted all the elements. So I have added 10, 20, 30 and 40 inside my list. And they are in the same order. And you can see them right here using the debug. Now let's see how can we access elements from the list. So if you remember, I told you about indexes that each element in a list is specified a particular index. Let's say if I want to access the fifth element of a list. So I know that I'll find it at index number four. In case I want to access the third element of a list, I know that that element will be present at index number two. So nth element of a list is present at n minus one index, right? So it is similar to uh, if you have used arrays in other programming languages. Let's say we have an array whose name is numbers and I want to access the fifth element. So I know that that element is going to be present at index number four. So I can specify the index inside these square brackets and it is going to be, it is going to give me the fifth element. So we can do it in the same way. Let's say I have a list of integers. So I'm going to just copy the list from above and uh, we can use it. So let's say we have a list of integers like this and I want to access the element number five. So I can specify the index as four here and it will give me the fifth element. So if you see, I'm getting the fifth element and the value is 50 for the fifth element. Okay. So the thing that we need to take care of while accessing elements from the list is that we should only specify the index which is actually present or valid for a list. So let's say if I want to display a number which is at the 10th index. So let's see what will happen. So if you see, I have an error and uh, if you see right here, the 50 is displayed successfully. That means that port till here was working fine. And after that, I'm going to have a list exception and it is showing me the error that list index out of bounds 10. This simply means that the index that you are trying to access is not present in the list, or you can say that there is no value present at this particular index inside the list. So whenever you are getting this error, you can simply say that you are trying to access an index which is not present inside the list. So this is how you can access elements for a list. And in case you want to access all the elements, you can simply run a for loop like this. So let's say integer i is equal to zero. i is less than how many elements we have seven elements. So I can say seven and then i plus plus. And uh, simply I can do system dot debug numbers of i. Or let's do one more thing. Instead of using numbers of i, I can simply do numbers dot get i. So I can also use the get function instead of specifying the square brackets and it is going to do the same work. Okay. So this is also one way to get the element present at a particular index. So let me just execute this code and let's see. Okay. We need to comment this out and uh, let's see. So if you see, this is the first debug statement, which is showing me 50 numbers of four because it is the fifth element. And, uh, then I'm displaying all the elements. So I'm simply displaying all the elements like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and I can display it using numbers.get i. So either you use this way, dot get function, or you use simply this way, both are fine. Now let's see how can we add element at a particular index inside the list. So what we were doing earlier, we were using this add function and we were just specifying the element and it is going to add the element at the end of the list, right? But now I want to add the element at a particular index that I specify. So let's say I have this list again. So I'm just going to take this list right here. So let's say I want to add a new element at index number three, and I want to shift all the elements one step ahead. Okay. Because if I'm going to add a new element right here, I want to shift 40 here. I want to shift 50 here. I need to shift 60 here and I need to shift 70 here. Right. So I want to shift all the other elements one step ahead and I'm going to add a new element at a particular index. Let's see how we can do that. So I can simply do numbers dot add and in this add function, I can specify the index, which is three and the number. So let's say I want to insert 80. Okay. And uh, I can again display the list. So system dot debug numbers. Let's see. So if you see now after 10, 20 and 30, I'm having 80 right here, which is added at index three. Okay. And I have all the elements shifted by one position. 
which are 40, 50, 60, and 70. Okay, so this is how you can add element at a particular index inside a list. All you need to do is to specify the index and uh, you can also specify the element. So you can pass two parameters in your add function. The first is going to be the index and the second is going to be the element. Now let's see how can we remove an element from a list. So in order to remove an element from the list, all you need to do is to specify the index of the element that you want to remove. So let's say I have a list like this, which is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And I want to remove the element which is present at index number two. So let's say I want to remove this element. Okay, I want to remove 30. So how can we remove it? We can simply say that uh, numbers dot remove and I can specify the index. So the index of 30 is two, two and that's it. So if I execute this code, so you can see now I don't have 30 inside my list. I have 10, 20, 40, 50, 60 and 70. So 10, 20, 40, 50, 60 and 70. So in this case, what's happening? Let's say I removed this element at index number two then all the other elements are shifted one step behind. So 40 is shifted here, 50 is shifted here, 60 is shifted here, and 70 is shifted here. So now 40 is present at index number two, okay? And we have a list like this, which says 10, 20, 40, 50, 60, and 70. So that's how we can remove an element from the list. Now it's time to look at other commonly used list methods. So the first method is clear method. Clear method is used to clear my list, or I can say remove all the elements that are present inside the list. So let's say I have a list like this, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And I can simply do numbers.clear and I can display this list again. So if you see initially I have the elements, then I called my clear function and I'm going to display my list again. And if you see right here, this was my initial list 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And then I cleared my list and it is becoming empty. So clear method basically clear all the list or I can say remove all the elements that are present inside my list. The next method is is empty method. So is empty method is going to check whether the list is empty or not. So let's say instead of displaying the list, I'm going to simply do numbers dot is empty right here. And I'm going to do numbers dot is empty here as well. So if you see initially I had elements inside a list. So is empty is going to give me false because is empty is going to return me a boolean that is my list empty or not. So in case I have elements, it is going to give me false and then I'm clearing my list. So my list is becoming empty. And this is going to give me true. Let's execute this code and let's see what happens. So if you see initially I'm getting false and then I'm getting true. So using is empty, you can check out if your list is empty or not. The next method is size method. Size method is going to give me the size of my list. So let's say I have a list like this again. And this time instead of is empty, I'm going to use size method. So size will tell me how many elements are present inside my list. So let's see. Or let's do the whole thing. I'm going to clear the list as well. And I'm going to call my size method again. Okay. Let's see. So if you see initially the list size was seven because there were seven elements that were present inside my list. And then I cleared my list. And again, if I check the size, the list size is zero because there is no element which is present inside my list. The next method is contains method. Contains method is basically used to check whether an element is present inside a list or not. So let's say again, I have a list like this and uh, I can simply do system.debug numbers.contains and I want to check whether 50 is present inside my list or not. Okay, so let's execute this code. And if you see, I'm getting true here. So true simply means that the element that I have specified is present inside my list. Let me just check it again for another number. So let's say I want to check for 100. Okay, so 100 is not present inside my list. And uh, if you see, so initially I'm getting true, which means that 50 is present inside my list. And then I'm getting false, which means that 100 is not present inside my list. So contains method is basically going to check if an element is present inside the list or not. And it is going to return you true or false based on the result. So the next method that we are talking about here is a sort method and sort method is going to sort your list. So let's say I have a list in the random order like 20 and then 30 and then I have 10 and uh, then I have 40 and then I have let's say 60 and then 70 and then 50. Okay, so I have this random order 20, 30, 10, 40, 60, 70, 50. Okay, let me just display the list first of all. So I'm going to do system.debug and uh, numbers and then I'm going to do numbers.sort. 
and again I'm going to do system dot debug numbers and let's execute this code so if you see initially I was getting the same list that I initialized which is 20 30 10 40 60 70 50 which is the same one and then I'm going to sort this list by using the sort method and it is going to show me the elements in an ordered manner okay so now I'm getting 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 so you can say that these are integers so it is fine that these elements are being sorted according to their value right but what if we have a list of strings so we can also have a list of strings let me just check this out and let me show you what happens now so we are going to have a list of strings right here and i'm going to do employees dot sort and i'm going to do system dot debug employees okay so let's execute this code and if you see initially i'm having a list like this which is saying richard monica or like dinesh which is fine and then i'm going to sort my employees list and after that i'm going to have elements like this which is Dinesh, Erlik, Monica, Richard. So it is basically going to alphabetically sort the list in case the list is of strings. So that's how you can sort a list and I hope you got to know that how can you perform a couple of operations on a list and how can you use the list data structure in Apex. Okay, there are a lot of methods that are present for a list class that you can check out in the documentation. So I'll give you the documentation link in the description of the video. And uh, apart from this, there are some other things as well. Let's say I want to sort a list of employees or if I have a custom class using which I'm creating a list. Okay, so in that case, uh, we can sort a list based on any particular property of the object as well. But that comes under the advanced topics. So in case you want to know about that, let me know in the comments down below and I'll create a video on the same. And in case you want to have a look at the code, you can check out the whole code right here inside this blog. Otherwise, I'm going to share this whole snippet as a GitHub guest as well in the description of the video so that's all for this tutorial everyone i hope you liked it let me know your feedback in the comments down below and i'll see you next time till then have a good day bye bye